I'm going to talk to you this morning about the fact that Jesus brings freedom. Amen. Say, Jesus brings freedom. Jesus freedom. But religion brings bondage. Did you know that? Religion brings bondage. People who are religious without a relationship with Jesus are in tremendous bondage. Amen. But Jesus came to bring us freedom. Amen. All right, Luke chapter 4. Let's uh, begin reading verse 16. It says, Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. To do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, the understood subject here in these verses is the anointing. Okay, the anointing. Say the anointing. Now, what is the anointing? The anointing is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Can you say amen to that? And this is what the devil is afraid of, is the anointing. Because when faith is mixed with the anointing, burdens are removed and yokes are destroyed. Amen. Now, what happens when burdens are removed and yokes are destroyed? The captives are set free. Amen. When burdens are removed and yokes are destroyed, freedom comes to those who are in bondage. Amen. Well, here's the good news. There's an anointing that's on Jesus. To bring freedom to the captives. To bring freedom to those who are in bondage. Can you say amen to that? Freedom from lack and debt. Freedom from sickness and disease. Amen. And freedom from religious bondage. Amen. It's possible for somebody to be religious but have no relationship with Jesus. Jesus said, ye must be born again. Born from above. Amen. Born into a new family. Amen. And then death moves out of your spirit and life moves in. Can you say amen to that? Now, Jesus here in these verses lists for us the various functions of the anointing, okay? Now, notice here the very first thing he says. Verse 18, this is number one. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The word gospel means good news. Let me ask you a question. What is good news to a poor person. Good news to a poor person is Christ came, hallelujah, to redeem you from the curse of poverty so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon you. And when that happens, you ain't poor no more. That's good news to a poor person. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Now, That's why the devil hates the anointing. And he'll come against preachers that have it, that have the anointing. He's not too worried about a preacher that just doesn't really have very much anointing on him. But when somebody is anointed, 
They become a, they pose a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Can you say amen to that? Because when somebody mixes faith with it, hallelujah, freedom comes. Freedom comes from lack and debt. Freedom comes from sickness and disease. Freedom comes from religious bondage when you mix faith with it. Can you say amen to that? Now, these scriptures here uh, became a building block when this ministry was first formed back in November of 1996. It became a foundational scripture. These scriptures here did. We went to these scriptures often. Okay? Our theme was Jesus came to set the captives free, praise God. Amen? Now, the name of this church, Liberty Life Church, came as I began to meditate on these scriptures right here. He gave me these scriptures, and then, he, and then the name for this church came out of these scriptures here. So I spent a good amount of time meditating uh, on the scriptures in the beginning days of this ministry. Now, <laughs> this church was formed in November of 1996. And we were driving down from Champaign to a midweek service um, on a Wednesday night. We'd been going maybe a couple of months, something like that. And the word of the Lord came to me on the way down to Matt too. And he said this to me. He said, I've called you. This was the word of the Lord. I've called you to influence people to follow Christ. And to equip them with God's uncompromising word. To live an overcoming life. And walk in the fullness of God's blessing. Now, he put the word blessing in my mouth way back then. I knew very little about it back then. I know a little bit about it today. But back then, I knew almost nothing about the blessing. But he, he did. He put the words, the blessing in my mouth way, way back when this church was, was first formed. He said, I've called you to influence people to follow Christ and to equip them with God's uncompromising word to live an overcoming life and to walk in the fullness of God's blessing in order to magnify his name. Now, I couldn't write it down just then. I was, I was driving the car. <laughs> but once I got to the church, then I wrote those words down. Amen. And I began to teach that to our people because that is the original vision for this ministry. And it's not too wise to get, to, to get too far away from your original vision. Are you following me? Now, it's easy to do. I, I remember somebody stood in my office. This is back when we were in another building at 14 Lafayette. Somebody stood in my office. I showed him our vision. I had it all written out, and I showed it to him. He, he looked at it and read it, and he said, it's too long. And I thought, hmm, well, he's smarter than I am. He probably knows some things I don't know. So I got, I got, they got to working on me. I got to thinking about that. Almost got talked out of it. Amen? No. How I many you know that God meant what he said and said what he meant? Amen? How I many you know the word of God is always up to date? And what God said, you know, 26 years ago or whatever, he's still saying it today. He's not changed his mind. Amen? And then some months later, he gave me the mission statement for this ministry. And I wrote that down. Now, what is it? See, vision is what you do. A mission statement is a brief statement that describes what you do, to whom you do it, and for what reason. And here's what he said. This is your mission. Reaching this region for Jesus, comma, demonstrating the power of God, and discovering the way of liberty together. I thought, praise God. Amen. Now, I didn't realize it, but I'd been doing this already for years. I just didn't know it. I wasn't able to articulate it. I mean, when I sell an insurance, I drove a blue Skyhawk 
And I was getting people saved right and left. When somebody got in that blue skyhawk, they got born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost almost every time. So my colleagues nicknamed that blue skyhawk the blue glory mobile. Because the glory just seemed to land in that blue skyhawk. Amen. And then they followed me to church. So I was already walking in this. I was already, because somebody said to me one time, when we were having lunch over at Common Ground, they said to me, they said, well, you're doing this stuff because you're a pastor. And I said, brother, in all due respect, I was doing this stuff years before I ever started pastoring. I'm thinking like, you don't do this stuff? You know, some people go through the entire Christian life and never, never lead anybody to Jesus. What a shame that is. I, I lead people to the Lord almost daily. Uh, there for a long time. Uh, clients, prospective clients, colleagues, they all, all of them were getting saved and back by the Holy Ghost. And they didn't get saved, and then six months later, I got a baptized in the Holy Ghost. They spoke in tongues right then. They did it right away because they had not been taught religion. I didn't got to wait through a whole bunch of religion to you know, undo a bunch of stuff to get them to believe this. They just believed it. They saw my life. They saw how I lived. They saw the fruit in my life, and they believed what I said. They didn't argue with it. They didn't fuss with it. They just believe. They just believe what they just believe what came out of my mouth. I said, "Now, if you believe what I tell you, I said you'll, you'll get born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost." And guess what? They got born again. They got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Began speaking in other tongues. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah! I said hallelujah. Now, let's go to uh, Acts chapter twenty-six. You know, it says in a in Habakkuk, to write the vision, make it plain. Well, I did that. I wrote it down. I made it plain. And I began to teach on it. Acts chapter 26. The Lord's been bringing this back to me here of late, what he said to me originally. He put this message in my heart about three weeks ago. But I was not released to preach it until today. Isn't that something? I had this in my spirit for several weeks. I just, I just was holding it until it was the right time to preach it. Okay, Acts chapter 26. Now, Paul here is appearing before King Agrippa. And he's describing his road to Damascus experience. Okay? And in verse 16, it says, For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Now, Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus. Knocked him off his high horse. You ever been knocked off your high horse? That means you think you, you think you think you know everything. You find out you didn't. Hey, know the Pharisees thought they knew everything. If you didn't dot every I and cross every T, they'd let you know that you missed it. See, a religious spirit. Hope none of you had that on you today. Hope you're all real precious, real sweet. The Pharisees were not sweet people. They were bitter. They were angry. They didn't walk in love. Amen. They're very judgmental, very critical. Amen. If you don't got to use, you got to be sweet. Paul was religious before he had this experience. He was religious. He was a prominent member of the Pharisees, of the Jewish sect. And he persecuted the church. People who are, who are religious will persecute the church, mainly preachers. They can think it's their job to get them straightened out. People who are religious. Say, I love you, Pastor. Amen. I love you too. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Say, Hallelujah. Jesus said to Paul, I've appeared unto this for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people. You know, before God can use you, you've got to be delivered from the people. You can't be afraid of them. I remember something that Larry Stockstill said at Family Church Company many years ago. He said, you cannot minister to a people that you're not free from. Doesn't mean you don't love them. I love that about President Trump. Nobody owns him. You can't control him. People around him can't control him. His campaign 
team can't control him. You gotta be kidding, man. He doesn't care about it. He just lets it come out. And it bugs a lot of people. It bugs people. These mean tweets. I'd rather have low gas prices and mean tweets than have what we have now. Say, I love you, Pastor. This may be my last sermon here. <laughs> I love you. Deliver thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Verse 19, whereupon, O King Agrippa, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Religious devils get nervous when Jesus shows up. You have a Bible study, they'll be real comfortable. The devil will. He'll just be real comfortable. He'll just sit there and be real comfortable. Prayer meeting, he's real comfortable. Unless Jesus shows up with his anointing and with some power, and with them, he gets real nervous then. Amen. Glory to God. I said glory to God because he knows who Jesus is. Does he know who you are? He knows. Yeah, amen. He knows who Jesus is. When he showed up, he said, who are you? <laughs> I know who you are. He said, I know who you are. He knew who Jesus was. He the madman of Gadara, Gadara, he knew who Jesus was more than the Pharisees did. They didn't know who he was. They were too religious. But the madman of Gadara was full of devils. He knew who Jesus was. Those demons knew who Jesus was. He knows when that anointing shows up. He knows when the power shows up. He knows when that glory shows up. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. So, before Paul could be used by God, he had to get set free from all that religious bondage. He's religious, but didn't know Jesus personally. Many in the church today are like that. Don't shut me down now because I'm preaching real good. Getting kind of quiet on me, all you know, all doing okay this morning. How about just wiggle in your seat? Just wiggle or do something. Just 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 show God that you're alive. Wiggle, lift your hands and just praise God. Do something. Do something. Do something. Praise God. Go go. <laughs> I, I love your family. Enough to tell you the truth. And some preachers won't tell you the truth. They don't want to lose anybody. I don't want to lose anybody. Long they'll stand before God one day, hear him say, well, then a good and faithful servant. Amen? <laughs> All right. Matthew chapter 11. Did I tell you to turn there? Matthew chapter 11. Jesus said in verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, See, religion's heavy. People who are religious are under that heaviness. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. They're too busy obeying rules and regulations rather than having a relationship. And I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is what? Easy. Religion's hard, but his yoke is easy and his burden is light. The anointing removes burdens and destroys that yoke of bondage that religion brings upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I had it on me for years. But I had a pastor who loved me enough to get it off of me. He had purposely tried to offend me, purposely do it, to want to see if I was gonna, how, how I was going to act and how I was going to react. The devil couldn't run me off. He said, no, see, my man of God, you can't run me off. I'm staying right here. I'm staying put right here in Jesus' name. 
until God's through with me here, and then he'll move me on to something else. He did. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Some people won't sit long enough under the man of God before, before God's finished training them. They get the big head. They get, they get too smart for their britches. But I just stayed put. I just stayed humble. I let him correct me. I let him instruct me. I let him direct me. And thank God I did. Thank God I did. Because that anointing came upon me. Praise God. Amen. And it's actually his anointing. Amen. Jesus is in this place this morning. Amen. Amen. He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. To, to do what? To set the captives free. Hallelujah. To heal the sick. To raise the dead. To cast out devils. Hallelujah. Amen. He's here this morning. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, hallelujah. So hallelujah. Glory to God. I may be almost 70, but I can still run. Devil, I can still run. And when I'm 70, I'm still going to run. I'm going to be 70 in November. And I drove through Chicago a little a few days ago. I drove like eight hours straight. And um, it, it was kind of, it's a challenge, but I did it. But I did it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord. Praise Say, I love my pastor. I love you. I love my family. <laughs> praise the Lord. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter, what is it? Chapter 3, verse 2. Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and, and read to all men, of all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the apostle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit, the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart, and, and, and such trust have we through Christ to God word. Verse 5, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Verse 6, who hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, the letter killeth. Don't kill someone's spirit because you think you're right and they're wrong. Let them go. Give them some grace. Amen. Don't be a Pharisee. Don't be a Sadducee. Let God handle it. He'll correct them. He'll get it straightened out. You aren't God. Let him be God. Just love on them. I love you, Pastor. <laughs> I love you too. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Now, verse 17. Now, the Lord is that Spirit. Say, the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Glory to God. Now, go to Galatians uh, chapter 4, please. Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Now, verse 28. Now we as brethren, as Isaac was, are children of the promise. Say children of the promise. Verse 31. So then, brethren, we're not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Look at verse 1, chapter 5, because he wasn't done talking yet. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ, the anointed one, as anointing, hath what? Hath made you free, hallelujah. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, as what happens many times, people come to church like this, and they get free. They get happy. But you've got to maintain that. You got to maintain that. You got to you got to continue hanging out with Jesus. That's how you stay free. You can't get religious. You got to take Jesus with you to your job, to the grocery store, everywhere you go. You got to be you got to be walking with Jesus. Amen. Because He brings freedom. Religion brings bondage. Hallelujah. If you start to back up from Jesus, you're gonna get religious. 
Then when the spirit begins to move, you're going to put the brakes on. Say, I don't like that. Yeah. You remember Stephen? He got some religious devils all stirred up. He said, you stiff-necked people. He said, you are like, you resist the Holy Ghost just like your fathers did and like you're doing right now. They got so mad, they ran him out of town and they stoned him. Some people love Jesus. They say they do until he shows up with his gifts and his power. And his then all of a sudden, woo! They don't like it so well then because, see, they're, they're religious. But Stephen, me full of the Holy Ghost, as he was dying, he said, Father, like, just like Jesus, forgive them. They know not what they do. See, he walked in love. You have to walk in love. You want to be anointed, you got to walk in love. You got to be quick to forgive people. You can't be religious. God can't trust you if you're going around correcting everybody all the time. You got to have a tender heart. You got to be compassionate. You want to help people. You want to see them set free. Come up here, sister. Uh, Lori, come on up here. Come on up here. Come on, lay my hands upon you. Praise God. God wants me to lay my hands upon you and pray for you. Is that all right? Come on down here. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And in the name of Jesus, just lift your hands and, and praise him. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I lay my hands upon my sister, I release your anointing to go into her. That every burden be removed. Every yoke be destroyed. There's the anointing. In Jesus' name, freedom come. <laughs> in Jesus' name. In, Je ha -ha. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Give the Lord praise for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. I remember we had a brother here one morning. He's from Springfield. He wasn't here. He didn't attend very long. He didn't know about any of this stuff. He didn't know you're supposed to fall when you got hands laid on. He didn't know about any of that stuff. Laid the hands on him one morning. He couldn't understand it. Bill, Whoa, what is this? He about fell over and he didn't know what it was. <laughs> Just the power of God. Amen. Another brother came forward one, one time to get delivered from the devil. And um, had an usher stand beside me. He reached back to try to hit me. He's going to try to knock me out. I said, brother, I said, you, you can't do that. Angel, my angel grabbed his elbow. He wouldn't let him go. The, but this, this, he go, go, only go like that. He couldn't hit me. And my brother, the usher, Clarence, he tried to help. Me. I said, no, no, just leave him alone. Don't do anything. I said, he can't hurt me. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Soon the power shows up and the fear of the Lord comes. People get kind of haughty and sometimes kind of sassy. When the, but, when fear, but when the anointing and the glory shows up, people get real humble. As well we should. I said, as well we should. Amen. I had a fear of the Lord growing up, but it's a fear based in I'm afraid of God. You don't got to be afraid of God. Now I have a fear of the Lord, but it's based in a respect and reverence of what he's done for me. Are you following me? It's not a I'm afraid of God kind of thing. It's a reverence and a respect kind of thing. Amen. So I had a fear of the Lord going up, but it was an unhealthy fear of the Lord. It's based in religion, not based in relationship. See the difference? Amen. Are you free this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, stand up. Praise God. I'm done. Hallelujah. Everybody say this. Say, Jesus came to set me free. Say, his anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes of bondage. So in the name of Jesus, I mix faith this morning with his anointing. And I receive freedom from every burden and every yoke of bondage. Freedom from lack and debt. Freedom from, from sickness and disease. Freedom from religious bondage. I am free. Whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Now shout about it, hallelujah. Just shout about it. Hallelujah.